Hi, I'm Ann Frazier. Welcome to another edition of Bringing Hope to Alzheimer's. I am sitting with my friend Adam Schlegel of Schlegel Fence here in Kansas City, and we're going to talk about a lot of different things. So welcome. Thanks. Thanks for being here. So let's just start out. Just tell us a little bit about, because one of the things Night of Hope is really, really interested in is keeping our money local and really supporting the local economy. And I'm a real estate agent, and so I suggest you guys or or tell people to call you all the time because you guys are so good. Thank you for that. Talk to, of course, talk to us a little bit about how long has Schlegel Fence been around? Talk to me about all of that. Well, it first started in, I think, 2014, 2015. Back then, I used to get jobs off of Craigslist and stuff like that, which doesn't really isn't a useful platform anymore, I don't think, or at least a useful platform for things that are legal anymore. And uh, (laughs) so... Did that and then did Facebook marketing back in the day before people even knew that they could market on Facebook uh, when Facebook was new. Right. And then um, just did side jobs. I used to work uh, road construction and then did side jobs. Got my first pickup and trailer and just started doing those side jobs and then eventually got a big fence contract and then grew from there. And now we're the biggest fence company in Kansas City. Yeah. And you guys do a great job. Thanks. Yeah. Do a great job. So let's fast forward. So You've got, so your family owns this or, you know, who's involved in owning this company? Well, I own it a hundred percent, but okay. my, my little brother is now involved and he's running it because I don't live full time in Kansas city any longer. Um, I come back and do things and have lots of fans, uh, friends and family here, mm-hmm. but he is going to be buying ownership in the company here very soon. Very so. good. Very good. So let's talk about you guys are, uh, one of the things I love is you guys are getting more involved in the community. And you're really, really wanting to give back. So we'll talk about <clears throat> Night of Hope in a minute. But let's talk about you guys are giving back in other ways to Kansas City. How is that? Well, recently, I guess the Night of Hope is the newest thing. But during the pandemic, we did a lot of grocery giveaways. We did a lot of, uh, we just did a lot of, a lot of philanthropy in general um, with the, during the pandemic, especially when it hit, we, our business actually did well. Everybody went home and needed fences and for their dogs and their families and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then on top of that, we got a PVP loan like a lot of people did, which uh, wasn't terribly necessary for many people like ourselves. So uh, we ended up giving a lot of that money back through grocery drives and, and helped different people, Hispanic okay. people and elderly people and different people that That's were affected point. negatively by the pandemic. Right. Very good. So then let's go to Night of Hope. You guys are going to be corporate sponsors this year for our gala. And tell me a little bit about why you chose to do that and kind of what your involvement is or or Alzheimer's in your family. Well, I think Luke was looking at a way to, because we weren't doing any uh, sort of donations after or recently. And so I think uh, Kayla spotted you guys. Our office manager has been with us for a long time. She's amazing. She's does a lot of stuff that I don't like to do. And yeah, so we've had Alzheimer's in our family before. Our grandfather had it. Our father and our uncles will probably get it soon. I mean, it's just a genetic thing that, you know, is there. And eventually, myself and my brother, probably. Hopefully uh, so, not. So hopefully not, yes. Right? Try to keep a healthy lifestyle and stuff like that. But, you know, it's a, it's not a, not a pleasant disease. It's not very fast acting. So it's a long, long deal to deal with. And so hopefully, you know, Every little bit helps, and hopefully they get more research and right. figure it out. Right. Well, and that's one of the cool things that, that we talk about. And I know you're not going to be able to be at the gala, most likely, but your family and your, your office staff. But that's that's the whole thing that we really, really love about what our message is. We're, we're different than other Alzheimer's charities in the fact that we not only help people deal with Alzheimer's, but we help people heal with it. So, you know... I started the gala because I wanted to be able to tell my story. My whole family dies of Alzheimer's or some form of dementia on both sides. And so when I was starting to have cognition problems at the age of 48 and was diagnosed at the age of 50 with early onset MCI pre-Alzheimer's, I was two points away from being full-blown Alzheimer's at the age of 50. That was, you know, I don't want to go down that road just like you don't, right? I, I was like, that's not an option for me. And the, the reason I do Night of Hope and everything is because we want, I've been able to reverse all my cognitive decline back to 100%. Congratulations. Yeah. And so it is lifestyle. It's, it's lifestyle. It's what you eat. It's what you drink. It's exercise. It's hormones. It's sleep. It's stress control. Mm-hmm. It's all those types of things. And so I live with it daily. But like I said, we want to help people heal 
with the disease. So our mission statement is the Night of Hope is all about bringing hope to Alzheimer's by educating people about brain health, prevention, early detection, and the potential of reversal. So there is no cure, right? But I have healed my brain while I'm living with it. Now, if I go off my plan and I start doing all the old things I used to do, I can't, you know, just go eat whatever I want to eat, whatever, yep. and all that. But if I start, I call it behaving badly, then I start having trouble again with my brain. So mm-hmm. it's, uh, I'm just learning to live with it and continue to heal with it. So yeah, yeah. I mean, diet is the, one of the most important things yeah, you can do. Exactly. Our grandfather that had Alzheimer's, um, a lot of the doctor contributed to also smoking habit. He was mm-hmm. a, he was a big time smoker. He smoked a lot. Right. Um, you know, back then, that was also during that time period, I think they were pushing a lot of, that was like when spam was out and a lot of different like canned foods and stuff like that, that had like just tons and tons of preservatives. Right. Now there's still a lot of preservatives in food, but back then it was kind of a craze of like the TV dinners and microwaves were new right. and all this stuff. And so, um, you know, and I remember when they used to, the whole fat free thing, you know, they were like, you know, cut fat out of everything and mm-hmm. put a bunch of like chemicals and stuff. Well, your brain actually needs a lot of fat. Um, that's how your brain actually functions really well. Yeah. And so fat is, you know, good, healthy fat, though, right? Not your your trans fats and mm-hmm. things like that. So, yeah. But, and I feel like my lifestyle now where I, I mean, I don't know if you want to go into where I live, but. I, Do, I, yeah. Um, so I live in Colombia, South America, in Cartagena, Colombia. Mm-hmm. Uh, my wife and uh, is from there and uh, we have a couple kids. Um, but our, our food, our diet is much all their food is much more organic because a lot of it, less of it is imported because it's produced there. So a lot of the fruits and stuff that we get, a lot of the meat comes from, you know, there locally. So a lot of it comes from those, their grass fed cows or, you know, I don't actually eat that much beef anymore because I've kind of cut a lot of that out of my diet because of some other health problems with my kidney and gout and stuff like that. So I kind of eat uh, more lean meat. I haven't completely got rid of beef, but that kind of scare got me kind of interested in a lot of the different things with your diet and how it affects you. Um, I still probably drink too much alcohol on occasion. I own a couple bars, so yeah. that uh, doesn't help. But um, your diet and and also stress, you know, your mental health. I used to struggle quite a bit with uh, anxiety, and and I was very nervous, and I was very had a lot of stress. I used to I was growing this this company here, and it was making lots of money, and I couldn't really figure out why I still had these issues of acid reflux and the stress, and I was taking Xanax, and I was taking these different things. But thankfully, since I've met my wife and live where I live, you know, I kind of the the waves in the ocean on the beach and stuff help with that too. But um, I don't have to take any medication, and I'm That's much. Awesome. Much, I used to be much heavier too. I used to probably be, you know, uh, a good sixty plus pounds from what I am wow. now. So you know, yeah, so much, you've made some great changes. Yeah, That's but really it, really good. It makes a large effect on not only your physical but your mental health. I mean, everything. Right. It affects everything. So right. Well, just the chemicals in food. There's so much research mm-hmm. about just the chemicals in the food can just induce depression, anxiety, yep. ADHD, ADD, things like that. And it's it's really not so much of an issue that's inside your body. It's what you're putting in your body because we are what we eat. And it's so normal here. From what I see back where I live, where it's just a little less developed with the commercial side of things. So here... Every quick trip you go into, you're getting hammered with stuff in your face that, like, look at these taquitos, look at these things that all have different preservatives in them because they need to last longer to sell and to sit on the shelves longer. And so, yeah, that convenience is great, but there's uh, there's also a price to pay when you, when you eat a lot of that type of food. Exactly, yeah. exactly. This episode is brought to you by Thrive Once More. And I'm going to tell you a personal story because Thrive Once More – I was looking for a new functional medicine, integrative medicine doctor, and I found Dr. Ann Morgan. She was a ER doctor for 22 years and got tired of seeing people come in so sick and um, just being able to treat the symptom that was happening at the moment and not really the inside of the body. So she started her own practice called Thrive Once More, where she helps men and women figure out what medical issues are going on in the body, and how to get to the root cause so you can actually heal and not just take a pill or or do something that's going to just treat the symptom and not the problem. So Thrive Once More, Dr. Ann Morgan, she's my personal doctor. If you want to make an appointment for just a quick consultation, you can go to thriveoncemore.com. And she is the uh, supporter of this podcast. So you had mentioned you're kind of, you know, you just make the assumption that you might 
get Alzheimer's because it's in your family. Have you ever thought about doing gene testing? I think my uncle has, or my uncles have, because they're, they're very concerned about it. They're in their 60s now. But, yeah, I mean, I guess I probably should, but sometimes ignorance is bliss in that regard. But, uh, you know, and, and lots of different things, you know, whether, like where I live now, pol- politics also, it's nice to be ignorant about a lot of things that are going on. So Right, exactly. You know, and the same thing with health. You know, I guess if I'm going to die, you know, soon, I mean, I'd rather just... I don't know. Let it be sudden, right? <laughs> but <laughs> right, instead exactly. of worrying about it until that happens, but, exactly. Uh, but also, I understand that it's good to to know things ahead of time and start preventive measures, like like you have, right? You know? So you, right, exactly. Because if you didn't start preventative measures, then you probably wouldn't be where you you wouldn't be sitting here talking to me. I right wouldn't now. be. No, no, because it's been I've been reversed now for about six, seven years. I mean, it took about a year to reverse, and so. It's incredible. Um, yeah, it is. And so that's that's our big message is, is hope. And and we have several great stories that the, at mm-hmm. the gala that we talk about, people whose lives are changing. And I love that you you do it, you did it without, well, I mean, you might take some medication, but a majority of it is, you know, non-medication. Yeah, I don't. I don't. So the, things, only, the so. only thing I take medication-wise is hormones, but that's the only thing. Everything yeah. else is, is completely through food and lifestyle. Yep. And su- supplements. I do take some supplements because, you know, because our food is so void of things, then I take some supplements that help me with those areas. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah, and I would say the same thing that happened with my, I had a little, the kidney issue with the with the gout and the uric acid thing. Yeah. But that was just all diet related. Right. A lot, it's a common thing, so I'm sure people understand what's going on there. But also the anxiety and stress stuff that I had before, you know, everything changed when I changed you know, how I was living and what I was doing, my daily right. habits. And, so yeah, there, and there, there's a book I want to share with you and share with our audience. So Dr. David Perlmutter, he wrote a, a book called, it's either Drop Acid or Acid Drop, but it's all about uric acid. And uric acid also is a huge contributor to Alzheimer's disease. Mm. So well, yeah, you should read that book. We should have people, we'll put that on our resource page. So I definitely, there's, I had no idea about purines and you know high medium low uh, purine level foods and so all that was very foreign to me and you know when I had this kidney thing happen and got the got the stones and the whole thing I was able to dissolve them through um, probably not the most healthy methods of af- <laughs> apple cider vinegar and different things my doctor said I was kind of stupid for doing that stuff but but I didn't have to they, they got rid of the stones and yeah. now I eat much healthier I know a lot of people that still suffer from gout and stuff like that that I that just chronically suffer from it because they never, they can't stop eating steak or they can't stop drinking beer. You know, even beer like 0.0 beer, even non-alcoholic beer is not, uh, has that, that has those ingredients in it. Even different types of fish, you know, there's high purine fish, there's low purine fish. And so I have a big table of stuff that I can eat and I just kind of get used to uh, changing that. I don't make a big deal with them when I'm out with people. Most of the time there's chicken on the menu somewhere mm-hmm. or turkey, you know, especially in more progressive areas, there's more options for that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, what are the, what, what are the fish that you can eat? Uh, mostly white fish. You know, the salmon is like, okay, it's like kind of there in the middle, uh, but shellfish is really, that's, that's really tough. I live, you know, on the coast and there's a lot of oysters and there's a lot of, lot of shrimp and stuff like that. And all of it also, as you probably already know, is about moderation. So, like, as long as I'm good, like, today, like, I just went to the Brouhaha. It was a great little cafe. And I had a veggie burrito for my for my breakfast. Mm-hmm. Because I know, like, maybe later, you know, if I'm hanging out with somebody, then there's not another option. I might want to eat a little bit of pork or something. But if I st- already start out eating bacon in the morning, then, you know, I've already, like, used up my quota for how much of that stuff that I should be consuming. Right. So, it's I mean, all about you just kind of got to be aware of yeah, that you've balance. proportion. You know? Right. And that's what I always say to my audience and to um, when I'm speaking is I'm not perfect and I will make choices that I know that I can counter later in the day or it's been a long time since I've allowed myself to have that. So it's all about balance and just really knowing your numbers and kind of knowing where you're at. So And drinking alcohol, you kind of, you enjoy your, you know, now that I've cut back drinking, I end up, and I have a little, I have a craft cocktail bar, but and my wife mentioned, she goes, you know, you drink a lot slower now. Because I used to, I guess I used to just hammer the cocktails. But <laughs> um, now, you know, I enjoy them more because I know that I can't have a huge quantity of these things without, you know, har- harming myself in the long term. So I, you know, have a couple of cocktails and I tend to sip on them more and kind of enjoy the cocktail more than, 
Exactly. Like, oh, great cocktail. Yeah. Another one, you know. But, right, right. So, do you do mocktails? Of course. I yeah. Mean, there's a lot of people that don't right. drink alcohol in general, and good for those people. Right. Uh, See, I'd maybe be I'll get there. With those but... with, I, I'd be careful not because they're usually loaded with sugar. Then yes. Which they have to give you the impression that they're yeah, yeah. but sugar's the devil. I mean, that kills my brain too. Mm-hmm. So anyway, yeah. But it's it's trying to find that that happy medium where you can find like a mocktail that isn't full of sugar that still has a flavor to mm-hmm. it that is enjoyable. But yeah, yeah. Well, good. Well, we're talking the same language. I mean, I love that, you know, yours is for your health, but in a different way. And, and but it's a lot of the same things that, that I do. And, and I really encourage you to read that book. It's a great book yeah. and, and the tie that has to your brain. Sure. So, yeah. Well, this was great. It was great to talk with you. Thank you to Schlegel Fence for doing, uh, being our business corporate sponsors, one of them, and for your involvement in our community. And I'll continue to refer you guys out for. Well, thank you guys. I mean, it takes a lot to, to take time on your day. You obviously have another job, and so to take extra time out to do things that you know aren't you know beneficial directly to yourself, but more beneficial to society in general is yeah, is a great thing. Yeah. As well. That's what we want to serve Kansas City and beyond um, really well. And mm-hmm. and I always say, you know, if something happens, you don't do anything with it, then it's kind of, you know, God doesn't waste a thing, really. And so I was able to utilize, you know, the life that I've lived and being a caretaker for my parents and all the things to be able to wanting to give back and let other people know that you don't have to die of Alzheimer's um, potentially. So that's kind of where we're at. But, yeah. Well, hopefully it helps the progress and the and the research and the cures and the medicine and all this That's stuff. That's it. So. That's it. That's what it's about. Well, thanks again for joining us. Thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing you guys next time on Bringing Hope to Alzheimer's. Thanks.